Uh, my name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This is so... Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is the 12th of December... Thursday the 12th of December 2019 and I was just listening to the radio and uh, it was just the radio broadcaster just mentioned that we were at the end of the decade we are weren't we I didn't even think about it we're at the end of another decade which is kind of weird well it's not weird it's but just for me I I can remember my age, <laughs> remember my age, but I do it by the decade, because I was born in 1970, so in 1971 I was one, in 1986 I was 16, well I was 15 until, you know, the end of August, but you know, I turned 16 in 1986, 96 I turned 26 I had to work that out uh, and then 2006 I turned 36 2016 I turned 46 and now I'm 49 I think I need a girlfriend I don't know uh, remember that song Lonely, I'm so lonely. I need somebody to call my own. Yeah, no, I'm not lonely. You can't be lonely when you got a ferret running around destroying the place. So, uh, I don't really get lonely. Occasionally, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't like some. A little bit of physical contact now and then. Just, you know, from a from a lady. Just a, a cuddle or a little hand. A little handshake. Just shake me hand. That'll be enough. Just someone just... Just flick my ears or something. Just, just something. Just something. Just some kind of love. <laughs> um... Getting your ears flicked ain't nice. I used to have that when I was at school. I had. See, my. I, uh, my ears were quite big. A bit, they seemed a bit sticky outy. But as I got older, they don't seem that big. Now that was a boring sentence. Imagine hearing someone say that in a conversation. Yeah, when I was younger, I used to think that I had big ears, but now uh, my ears don't seem that big. Yeah, or what's your point? Is there more coming, or is it, was that the whole sentence? Yeah, that was that was it. That was that was everything. But why are you telling us that? I don't know. I thought it might uh, bring us closer together. I thought it might. Um, if I told you that, you might fall in love with me. <laughs> and have my babies. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood. I'm in a weird mood. I've got the... Um, oh, oh. I'm tired. I can't do my normal... Routine today because I've got I've got my chair being picked up from the catalogue. So because it was it got it was damaged when it was delivered, and um, oh, there's so much to tell you. So I don't plan what I'm going to talk about as I think anyone that listens that more than a couple of times to my recordings will know that there is no um, 
I think direction is probably the right word. Andre's really annoyed with me because I wasn't able to get to the shops today and I'll tell you why in a minute which meant I wasn't able to get him any food the food that he likes he's very very fussy like proper fussy he only eats a certain type of food with gravy he likes um, I can't remember what it's called but I know the box <laughs> it's weird and I don't remember the name of it but I know the box I know what it looks like he won't eat it with jelly he will if he's hungry enough you know if he gets hungry enough you know but then we'll all eat pretty much anything if we get hungry enough and I don't I don't want to put him through that it's why should he why should he be hungry when he's got no reason to be if he's hungry he eats I don't want him sitting there thinking with his tummy rumbling oh I don't want to go near that stuff don't like it what have I done wrong? Why is my dad so angry with me? Why did he give me that crap again? And then, so basically, I had, I found some stuff in Aldi a few months, a couple of months ago, and it was a lot cheaper. And it was also with gravy, so I thought, I'll get this if he likes it because it's cheaper. And it was a bigger packet, and I, you know, I don't know, just. I just thought I'd just test it on him, just to see if he liked it, if he liked it. It's not so much that w that's what I would get all the time. It just meant that I it gave me another option, you know, instead of... Because sometimes, when I go to Iceland, they don't have what he wants. And, uh, you know, they don't have the one in gravy, they just have it in uh, jelly. So I can't get it. So it's nice to have a little backup, you know. Anyway, I bought this packet of 24 or whatever it was, and he wouldn't touch it. He liked the gra he'd licked the gravy up. He liked the gravy, and then he'd just leave the rest of it. And it's so, like, oh, okay. And I thought, no, he'll eat it if he's, if he's hungry. I don't mean like starving, but, you know, he'll eat it. But he didn't. I came, you know, I left it. The next morning I came back and it was still there, all dried up. It didn't, And that doesn't stop him from eating it if it's dried up. But he wouldn't touch it, didn't like it. And he was, he was eating the dry food instead. Which is not his first go-to. He you know, prefers the wet food to the dry food. But I do enc try and encourage him to eat the dry food. Oh, last week, because I ran out of money, I ran out of dry food. So I managed to... I got him... Um, some cheap go cat dry food which is yeah it's okay for cats and stuff there's nothing wrong with it but I normally get him ferret dry ferret food because it's got special I don't know it's, it's specifically for ferrets and the cat food I give him isn't you know because I don't I don't give him raw meat or anything like that or even cooked meat I don't don't like give him stuff generally he well, though he used to eat pizza, but that's because he used to nick it. I mean, when he was little, he's he's still little, isn't he? But when he was like tiny, he used to be able to get everywhere. And if I left anything on a plate, whether it's pizza, bread, cake, as I say, <laughs> as I say those words. A little bell rings in my ears, and like, well, that doesn't sound very healthy, does it? So, okay, what what shall I say? Oh, uh, I can't even think of a, a healthy meal. What's a healthy meal? Pasta. Pasta? I don't know. Um, pizza with tomatoes. Pizza with salad. Cold slaw. Ice cream. Sponge and ice cream. Oh, you know the one thing I'd like, and this is this is a really weird thing. I'm I don't care about drinking alcohol. Don't care about drugs. Don't care about any of that stuff. The one thing I'd like to be able to do without it affecting me physically 
the two things. And again, I know I'm, don't judge me, I'm just saying this is what I'd like. Uh, I'd like to be indestructible as well, but I'd like to be able to smoke cigarettes without, you know, the, but you know, obviously there's harmfulness, so forget that. But I'd like to be able to eat absolutely anything I wanted which I kind of do but I'd like to be able to do it without um, that little guilty feeling of well you know this is gonna, this is gonna it, it's a little bit like running through stinging, stinging nettles naked it's like you know before you do it you know this is gonna end up this is gonna end up bad this is not gonna be a good ending it's like okay so I'm I love, but I love ice cream, and I do have a sweet tooth. There's a limit. There is a limit. Marzipan is a definite line that I won't cross. There's, you know, there's a line of sweetness that, I, and I don't. I, I do like savoury stuff as well. Um. But I'm probably more into savoury stuff if I'm drinking alcohol. Now, I don't drink alcohol at all these days. Not through choice. Or not through like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not on a kind of a, a seven step plan or anything. Um, I just don't drink. There's, there's no particular reason. I've actually tried to drink and for some reason my body just doesn't I just don't enjoy it anymore and that's how I used to be when I was younger nearly all the way through my 20s I'd have a drink now and then if I was in a pub, nightclub I'd have a drink well not a nightclub so much I think I'd have a coke in a nightclub because I didn't like using the toilets and if I drink I love this expression it's not mine but um, after the second pint the seal breaks you know your bladder and you kind of continuously go into the toilet I say it's not my expression I don't know where it came from but it was a friend said that to me once it's funny the seal breaks and um, I that's what I'm like after two pints of lager or two cans of lager I suppose I'm just constantly weeing The only time that's been a good thing, it's not, it's not, it's not a bad thing, you know, it's not like, it, it, oh, it's not something that I'd need therapy for, it's like, oh, let's talk about your childhood, no, 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 I want, I want to talk, I want to talk about my constant weeing when I drink, oh, Jason, that's going to take years of therapy, oh, it's, it's, only one time that it's been a good thing and that was when I had a bladder infection now I'm not saying this is a good idea because for quite a few different reasons first of all if you've got a bladder infection it could be some kind of yeast thing you know drinking alcohol is not especially lager and stuff it's, it's obviously it's not a very good idea I guess plus I was on antibiotics I definitely don't drink while being on antibiotics. However, I'd finished the course of the antibiotics and I still had this, it's basically a need to go to the toilet all the time, uh, doing wee wees, piss piss. And I, most of the time I didn't need to go. It was just constant, that like feeling. And I had it for a few weeks. And it, after, basically what happened is I got a dog bite. This is, it's all to do with what I'm doing now as well. Can you believe it? I was, this is in 2000, it was during the Olympics. So when was the last Olympics? I know there was Olympics 2012. So before that, the Olympics would have been 2008. So yeah, it was a 2008 Olympics. It was during the summer. I just finished my first year of university. 
and I was delivering leaflets that I had printed up of um, for my website jasonnewland.com free hypnosis service and I was just delivering them I had thousands made up and I was delivering them all around like my town a lovely day and you know whatever so it's nice everything was going well and then I, I put my I put one of the leaflets through the door but it was one of those leaflets I, one of those letter boxes that was like really hard to open so I opened it I had to push the paper through and then suddenly it, I got my, my my hand was pulled and I didn't realise until I pulled my hand out of the letter box that the end of my little finger had been bitten so that going into too much detail I mean, yeah, actually the the, do, the doctor at the hospital said that uh, the nail would never grow back because I'd lost the nail but it has grown back it's very it's scarred it's all you know but in all reality how many people look at your little finger and even if they did I wouldn't care you know I'm really not that bothered I think if anything a scar shows signs of experience and just signs of we've all got marks and scars on our bodies everybody whether it's stretch marks whether it's I've got scars on my scalp that you only only see when I've shaved my head I've got a dent in my scalp oh Andre's being naughty well just then I had to pause. I had to pause to record it because Andre was caught in. He caught his his finger now in a pair of my uh, tracksuit bottoms that he sleeps in. So I don't know how he managed to do that because I only cut his toenails last year. I don't know how they've grown so quick. But I literally done them a few days ago, so it's. Anyway, I got it caught, and I couldn't release it because it had split into his nail because he'd been like forcing it. So I had to take him into the bathroom, get some scissors, and cut his his uh, paw off. So yeah, he's now now only got three three legs. So I had to cut around, cut out the. Uh, you know the the material or whatever, and then I cut his nails. Honestly, what would he do if I wasn't here? The amount of times that he's got caught in stuff, and he's the same happens with his uh, with his thingy thingamajig thing when he's Randy. He gets caught sometimes in. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it sounds wrong but it's true it does happen it does actually happen and so I have to help him um, so yeah but it's, it's like what would he do if I wasn't here because I'm not always here you know I just, I'm not with him 24 hours a day usually at the moment I kind of am if I'm at home because all the doors are open and he can come and get me whenever he wants and if he's in trouble I can hear him because he, he makes a lot of noise when he's stuck but well, you know if I'm not here if I'm out shopping or stuff anyway I can't remember what it was I was talking about and you know how I like to I like to be very organised during these recordings so uh, please accept my apologies for not being perfect as perfect as I normally am perfect oh yeah so I just this, this nail this um, no weird I'm talking about my nail and then he gets his nail caught so it wasn't really a big it, it looked worse than it was 
well actually the bloke who cleaned it up said it actually is worse than it looks like oh okay but it it wasn't really it was they said oh you might have to you might need surgery and uh, we can try and save the nail for you like you don't really care it. why would I care about a, a nail I don't need you to save the nail it's, it's not it's not like it's one of my kidneys I'm not that bothered you know the nail's off leave it off I don't need uh, I'm not I don't really care that much about it a bit of pain pain medication would be nice but I can clean it up and they said well you've got to have a tetanus a dog bite and all that I said alright and uh, they gave me antibiotics and then the antibiotics after that seemed to give me I mean, it's, it's hard to know if it, that's what caused the bladder infection, but uh, unless it was the dog bite that caused the bladder infection, who knows? Who knows? But anyway, I, had, I did the seven days of antibiotics, didn't drink, and in them those days I was drinking pretty regularly, like every day pretty much, and so I didn't drink for a, a week. I was looking forward to having a drink, and the antibiotics and I had a drink and then suddenly after the antibiotics finished you know and suddenly I had this bladder infection that's needed to go to the toilet all the time and I was a bit worried that it was a prostate thing because it's the idea of having a prostate exam and I like my doctor as a friend but I don't you know I just uh, I actually a few years back I um, had this female doctor and she just saw me I think I got an emergency I got an appointment I can't remember what it's for it might have just been for um, yeah I'll tell you what it was it was a review because I have a, an annual an anal checkup every year where because being with a mental health team, they give me like ECG, check my weight, check my height. What the hell are they checking my height for? Why don't you check my hair colour while you're at it? It's, you know, it's, that's, uh, I'm, I'm five foot eight and I'm never going to be any shorter. No matter what that measuring tape, how much, however much it lies to me, I will still be five foot eight. I'm never going to be shorter. And uh, one lady a couple of years ago was happy to say, no, you're f now five foot seven and a half. I said, no, I'm not. I, honestly, I don't, I've never hated anyone so much. I really hated her. <laughs> she didn't realise, it's like, don't mess, don't mess with a short person's height. Don't, every inch, and not just height, you know, every, every, every ask any man, every inch counts. So uh, I um, I'm five foot eight. I don't care what anyone says, and still tall enough than Tom Cruise, I think. So I go to this annual thing, and I, you know, blood press, cholesterol, the leather, all that stuff, blood tests and stuff, and. Uh, then I have to go to the doctors to get the results. So that's what I did. So a couple of years ago, I went to get the results. My cholesterol's always high, or has been for the last couple of years. It was very high back in 2008. My cholesterol was really high, but then I got it down. So, but this, the last two years, this year, especially in January, when I, because I did, the blood test in December went to the doctors in January and they said your uh, cholesterol they told me that my cholesterol was very high and I needed to pretty much go on to I don't know what are they are they beta blockers or whatever so, you know, medication either that or I need to get it down low and I said well and, I, and they said once you're on a medication you have to stay on it I said, nah, I don't fancy that. 
I mean, it's it's different if it was. I don't know if it was like a heart condition or something, and they said you need to have this medication to live. I was like, yeah, okay, you know, it's like, yeah, cool, I'll, I'll take them. You know, I'll take them now. How many? How many? I'll take them now, right now, in front of you. But and with the bipolar medication, I take it usually, not always, but I do take it generally. But I. I kind of hope that it will change in the future. There'll be a time when, you know, something, uh, especially with like brain stuff, there'll be maybe a cure for it, you know? Maybe there'll be a, a different medication that will sort it out. Perhaps not in my lifetime, but I don't know, maybe. But then that could be the same for everything, couldn't it? I mean, it's... Who knows? 20, 30 years' time, they'll be probably... be able to replace all the organs of the body, perhaps. Who knows? I hope so. Yeah, how groovy would that be? I just want people to not suffer. That's, that's kind of what I want for other people. I don't want to be personally involved, but I just just what you know that would be that would be my wish in the world, you know, for everybody to just not suffer or to just not suffer unnecessarily. It's okay to suffer because that's part of being alive. It's okay to have problems and bereavements and all that stuff. That's suffering. And it's just something we all need to go through. You know, relationship breakdowns, whatever, illness. We've all got to go through that stuff. And we've all been through that stuff at some times. It's the unnecessary suffering. That's what I don't like for others. I don't want people. I want people to to not have that. And, yeah... I know it's a little bit dreamy. It was a dreamy. I kind of uh, live in a little Disney world when it comes to that kind of stuff. But, yeah. Anyway, so I'm in the Euro- I'm in the, the pub toilet, the urinal. Not inside the urinal, I'm standing, you know, next to it. And basically... This is like a, a TV show, isn't it? You see the man at the urinal and he's going, oh. And then you see, like, suddenly the words on the screen, three weeks earlier. And then you go back and, you know, I'm getting a, uh, getting my finger bitten by a dog and, uh, you know, it's a bad. <laughs> and, like, how did you get from there to there? So. I went back to the doctors about, I thought, oh, is it my prostate? Is it enlarged? Uh, whatever, you know, because I, I did what pretty much everyone does and perhaps shouldn't do. I Googled it. You know, and you, you never get nice, nice stuff. I don't know if I've ever Googled, it, Googled any medical um, symptom with, where it said, don't worry. Don't worry, JJ, it's going to be all right. There's probably nothing. You can get it checked out anyway. Go to the doctor, but just assume that it's okay. But at least then you know. No, it's it's more like panic, 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 alarm. Like alarms go off. It's like ask the internet. So I try not to get to to go down that line. It's it's difficult because it's it's tempted, isn't it? It to just. Uh, it's almost if you're gonna about to go on a blind date with someone, but you had their name, you'd Google them, wouldn't you? You just, you know, it's just, it's standard. It's, I don't think anybody wouldn't. It's like, no, I don't want, not, I don't want to know anything about them. Now you'd Google them. I would. So. Uh, 
I generally only Google myself. <laughs> uh, mind you, you know they say never eavesdrop because you'll you'll never hear anything you like. Well, it sometimes goes that way with um, googling yourself because I, I did that a couple of times and I've seen someone writing something horrible about me. It's like, oh no, I don't like that. Anyway, I go to the doctors. The time that I went to the doctors before, you know, when I, um, and I said to the doctor, uh, this is a, a, like, like, like a couple of years ago, I said, listen, I've got prostate issues in my family, uh, two of my uncles and stuff, and I just said, and I was um, listening to Stephen Fry on the radio talking about how you can get your prostate tested really easily now it, it doesn't it doesn't require uh, what it used to require there's a way of doing it through like a blood test or a urine test or something and she said oh mm, she was uh, she wasn't didn't sort of seem very convinced about that test I said so what you say I need to need to have it have it done like the old fashioned way you know like glove puppet kind of and she said yeah but I'm not doing it well listen that's what she said I'm not doing it it's like and the look on her face honestly it, it was I almost felt like I better check my zips not undone and my, you know make sure that I'm not hanging out just she was looking at me in disgust it's like oh I forgot to put my underpants on again my trousers I've not walked around naked again oh and uh, I couldn't believe it the look like I'm not doing it honestly she backed away she backed away uh, well she actually she jumped out the window she jumped out and ran away screaming it's like I didn't I wasn't asking you to do that and you know what it might surprise you but I actually don't want you to do that you know it's it's eh. you know it's not really what I want a stranger well it's for me uh, <laughs> I just um, oh, how do I word this yeah I, I just it doesn't doesn't feel like a medical thing to me and I was a bit worried and I did yeah so yeah anyway it didn't happen it never has yet but probably going to have to at one point and I thought I was going to have to have that done with with the the bladder infection because I didn't know it was a bladder infection when I went to the doctor and I thought oh he's going to want to you know, it's going to turn me into Kermit Frog or something. Like, oh, it all oh, oh, that's by Kermit Frog. Oh, Miss Piggy. Oh, Kermit. Hiya. That's my. Business. Mind you, they didn't used to have. It was more sticks, wasn't it, with their hands and stuff? But um, I'm trying to think of a famous puppet. Uh, for me, Orville. But other people in other countries might not have ever heard of Orville but if you're really bored and you're still awake Google Orville the Duck Orville the Duck or Orville and Cuddles and Orville the Duck had a, a, a big hit song called I Wish I Could Fly and now I'm going to sing it to you no I'm not, I'm not going to sing it to you I do a little bit. I just, I just, 
thing is, is if someone's already asleep and suddenly they hear me it might put you off but it basically is I wish I could fly right up to the sky but I can't and the uh, what's his name Keith Harris says you can I can't and then he says uh, I wish I could do the things that the other birds do you can I bloody can't and then Keith starts singing look over you who is your very best friend and Orville looks up at him and he says you are I'm gonna help you mend your broken heart and Keith Harris would look at the audience and he'd smile a lovely smile had really curly hair it's very lovely I saw him once um, on stage it's really nice anyway and he says now listen to me Orville Orville yeah <laughs> Orville looks up to him going yeah who is your very best friend so he look, he's looking at the duck we all know it's a, a puppet but the, the way he looks at the duck it really feels like there's some love there real kind of connection I'm gonna help you mend your broken heart and listen to me Orville Orville yeah who is your very best friend you are I'm gonna help you mend and then Orville sings this bit my broken heart I could do it I can do a better sound if it's louder so I'm doing it quiet my, I wish I could fly right up to the sky but I can't you can I can't <laughs> it was great and then there was um, Cuddles who was a monkey and he kept saying oh, I, hate I hate that duck I hate that duck and it was like and then Orville would say I hate that monkey I do that monkey I don't like him at all that monkey I hate that monkey so it was kind of it was good it was, it was really I'm not sure I've really sold it to you I think you need to perhaps go on YouTube and see it for yourself but it's uh, admittedly if it was in the charts now you possibly wouldn't want to go and buy it from my description I hold my I hold my hands up to that it's like but I'm not I'm not trying to sell you the song they should have done a, a Christmas Christmas song did you know did you know that uh the Pogues frontman um, Shane is it Shane isn't it you know the Pogues the Christmas song um, that they did something of New York fairy tale of New York he earns about £700,000 a year in royalties just from that song according to the internet seven hundred thousand pound a year and every year he's he's in the charts with that song or him and his band are in the charts with that song every because it's one of the most famous christmas songs in this country possibly in other countries as well it's like wow And there's one word in the song which has, as time has gone by, is edited out. And it's been changed to maggot. So it's a word that rhymes with maggot, I think. Or maybe, no, maybe it's just been deleted or edited, I don't know. But sometimes the radio stations forget I forget to do it and they'll they'll play it you know in the morning or early afternoon and they'll just play the original version 
completely forgot to play the the clean version and I don't know just it mildly amuses me that they've forgotten that's all really just there's, there's no enough nowhere else there's nothing else to go with that story just so I remember that year 1980. <laughs> That's good. I remember that year clearly. It was nineteen. Um, it was, um, yeah, it was as clear as clear as fog. I remember it was nineteen eighty eight, or no, it wasn't. It was Christmas. 1987 the Pogues pretty sure and it didn't get to number one but I wanted it to I didn't buy it you know I just wanted it to get to number one but I didn't need to buy it because I had the radio playing all day long at work and at least once an hour possibly more than often than that that song was being played so why why did I need to buy it and if I was listening to it all the time the last thing I wanted to do was go home and listen to it in the evening as well mind you I was working in the evenings too so I was I was hearing it all the time and I just thought it would be good to have something like that number one because it was so it was kind of, I think the word irreverent, because it was like an anti-Christmas song, really, because they were basically hurling insults at each other, which I thought was really groovy. And another one of my favourite Christmas songs is... I like all of them, really not carols I'm talking about Christmas like pop songs I like Christmas carols as well but I like the I like Last Christmas by Wham I like the Elton John Christmas song Um, I like the Shaken Stevens Christmas song so if you want to get, if you want to really kind of get to know me a little bit, get to know my kind of background and my childhood likes and dislikes, I'll let you into a little secret, just in case you don't know. I, I don't use the word obsessed, but I was a huge fan of Shaken Stevens. And that would have been late 70s early 80s or all the way through the 80s really but you know my uh, fanaticism which is I think isn't that what, where fan comes from fanaticism fanaticist which is kind of extreme I uh, a fanat a fan well it didn't come from fanny fart did it it must have been from Fanaticist, yeah. And um, I did probably by the age of probably by eighty five, nineteen eighty five, eighty six. I probably wasn't that bothered about him anymore. But you know, he had a good run with me. He and he was the biggest. He was the most successful British singer in the eighties see above George Michael above Elton John above Cliff Richard those people that you'd expect to be you know the top um, what's his name uh, Shaken Stevens was the biggest selling recordist most successful recordist recording artist 
of that decade because he spanned the entire decade and he kept having a hit after hit album after album did I say after album after album and uh, at least that's what the internet says I used to be a real fan real fan behind the green door don't know what they're doing but they laugh out loud behind the green door we should let me in so I can find out what's behind the green door green door what's that secret you're keeping green door Green door, what's that secret you're keeping? There's an old piano when they play it hot behind the green door. Green door, don't know what the. Anyway, yeah, so I know some of the words. My favourite, apart from the Christmas song, there's a few others that I kind of I've forgotten about, but I hear now and then I think, ooh, I like that. But there's a particular song It's Raining and it goes like it's raining so hard I think it's gonna rain all night well I guess I'll have to accept the fact that you're not here I wish the rain would hurry up and end my dear says it's hard to sing at this this volume. I mean, you know, if I was actually singing, you'd just be blown away like, wow, wow, that's awful. That's really bad. But, you know, it's at a low level. It sounds kind of... Mm. So I had the dog bite, and uh, I... So I waited for the doctor and I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have to, it's going to turn me into Orville, the duck, basically, that's what I was saying, that's how I got into Orville. And, well, that didn't happen, because the doctor said, oh, you got, he's got a bladder infection, here's some more antibiotics, yeah, so I took them, didn't work, went back a week later, took another load for another week and still didn't work so and I so I'd gone about three weeks without drinking any alcohol and I wasn't happy I was I just wanted a drink yeah it was it's just because I was used to drinking every day it wasn't really like a problem or an issue just it was my hobby I suppose I don't know it was something anyway I went to the pub because I'd finished the antibiotics and I thought got very angry very and I had a, a pint of lager I think I ordered two pints of lager and sat down and the first one went down pretty quickly and then I had another pint and then as my friend said the seal broke and I went to the toilet half expecting more of the same you know that I'd had for two, three weeks or whatever and I had the best wee wee of my entire life And it was long. The wee wee days. The, the, it was. And satisfying. It felt beautiful. I can't explain. Honestly it's one of the best feelings I've ever had in my life. And it just lasted forever. <laughs> it was just. It, it's like the whole two pints were just leaving. And all the other water. Because I've been drinking water. It was 
so nice. And I finished. Yeah, I did what was necessary and I washed my hands, of course, because I'm very hygienic. And that feeling, well, I went and sat back down at the, at the, the pub that feeling had gone that feeling that I'd had for all those weeks of like needing to go to the toilet had just gone it's almost like those two pints of lager just cleaned out cleaned out my my uh, bladder and it was just done gone whatever was in there just and I've never had it since and this was back in 2008 it's now 2019 never had that feeling ever again it was quite a magical moment I mean, it's really easy you know to get stuck in remembering like crappy stuff that happened but that was a magical moment in my life and you say, well, what about the three weeks leading up to it? Yeah, it wasn't so great. But you know what? That feeling of absolute pleasure, which is in the top ten of feelings I've had, probably. The feeling of complete, just relief, release. You know, it wasn't, it was the tension was releasing from my body. The mental anguish, everything was just all um, being released out of me. Thingy. And it was nice. And it just... Oh, it was really good. Ah... I'm not going ah oh, but yeah it was really good so I think it's nice if we can actually remember the nice moments because even with like illness and stuff there's a point when you feel better there's a point you know I had gastroenteritis uh, earlier this year oh god that was that was horrible but the thing is, I was able to laugh at it. I was able to laugh at what was happening. Even though I didn't feel very good and I'd almost reverted back to being a baby. I lost control of everything. It was really... I'm not going to go into details, but... Part of my pride got extinguished during that period which is good you know part of this kind of I'm this uh, person and I'm you know well actually well I am a person but having gastroenteritis meant that I couldn't leave the house and things were happening that would normally be unacceptable but I could not control it I had nothing and I was ill and there was freedom in that I literally I was sitting there and my friend was sitting the other side uh, sitting uh, over there or whatever and I farted which is normally just a normal thing for me and I said excuse me I'm going to have to go and have a bath it's just like it's, it's I, I was laughing because my washing machine wasn't too happy but you know it's kind of it's nothing I can do about it this is you know and then when it finished and I was able to eat again and go back to doing what I normally do 
It felt great. I was going to talk about the election, but maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Because the election's today, and I'm waiting for the chair to be deli- to be picked up. I need to walk up and get my. Well, I need to vote. I need to go and vote today, so I'm probably going to go out with my friend. And uh, I need to go and cancel out his vote, basically. <laughs> So whatever he votes, I know who he's voting for. I'll vote for the opposite. Not for that reason, but it's just we've got different um, political leanings. I'm not really very political. I just don't like the way that the public has been treated for the last nine years. Plus, I lost my career because of the government. You know, I was a councillor and all the austerity cuts. I ended up losing my career as a counsellor because I was working for charities and they lost their finances and uh, I lost my work and then I ended up going back and working in a call centre and I got ill so yay, 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 yay the government but what I do is every, every election night I stay up all night and watch the election. Now I realise these days I stay up all night anyway, so it's not really a big thing. But I used to stay up all night and then go to work. In the past. So this would be the first, no, the the second election night, because there was one in 2014. No, 2017, sorry. And so this would be the first election, the second election night where... I'm not really affected by it in the sense of staying awake. Although, in two years ago, I wasn't awake all night. This is more just the last year or so, I think. So my routine, I've got a little routine that goes on with the election, is... And this started in 19... Nineteen eighty-six, nineteen eighty-seven. 1987 so there was an election in 1987 I was living above a chip shop where I worked and I worked until probably 10 o'clock something like that 9 o'clock but I can't remember whatever time I finished in the evening went upstairs I didn't vote I wasn't old enough to vote because I think you had to be 18 to vote back then and I was only 17 no 90 no I was still 16 I was 16 Uh, because I wasn't 17 until the August and this the election was probably around about the June May time I think. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, I started a new tradition in the new, in the, the new land household, my, my household, which I've carried on pretty much every election night. And that is, I get a pizza, like a delivery, or if I live close to the pizza place, I'll go and collect it, but I don't at the moment, so I haven't done it for a long time. So I will get a pizza delivery and I'll sit up all night and I'll watch the results coming in. And i watch... I don't always stick to just one channel. Usually I'll watch BBC One because I like their political coverage, the way they, they're very good, they're used to doing it. But I also like to sort of skip sometimes to maybe Channel Four because they'll have like a bit of a comedy thing going on where they'll still have the results but they'll be kind of making fun of each other and making fun of the politicians sometimes I'll skip between the two and what I find interesting 
is the results are different between the two channels. So one's ahead of the other. So like, which one's right? But um, yeah, I do find it interesting. So I've been doing that since 1987. I don't know how many elections there've been since that time. I mean, they're usually about every four years. But I'll probably talk more about that tomorrow. That's if I do one tomorrow. Blimey. No, I suppose I could if I wait into early hours of the morning and I can leave the TV on it or still have the the results coming in on it so I can I can watch it on mute for an hour. That won't that that should be alright. Yeah. That should be alright. And then I'll tell you about my uh I'll tell you about that. I say I'm going to tell you now, but prob- I probably won't tell you because I'll probably end up talking about my toenails or something. <laughs> so, what was I going to do? I was going to give a. I was going to give a special shout out to somebody. I'll do that tomorrow as well, as well. I've been thinking, before I go, I've been thinking, it does happen sometimes, and it's not a new thought, it's the possibility of doing a live broadcast, a regular daily, nightly live broadcast. But I don't know if I've got it in me to do it. Which might sound a bit strange, but I don't know. I'd need to have some interactions. And and by live broadcast, I don't mean on Facebook. No video, it'll be like a radio show. And it'll be on Spreaker but I'll put it on my my website so you can listen directly there or go to Spreaker or wherever and then you can listen to it afterwards on various podcasts or whatever it would, you know, it will be saved automatically I thought it would be, it'd be something that I could do live so that you'd for those that want to listen at a specific time for the company or for just something to do uh, some, or just because they enjoy it you know um, just for something to do there's always something to do isn't there but I don't know if that would be something that would be I don't know if it's a good idea or not basically that's what I'm saying and then I could have people send in like Facebook messages and Twitter messages and I could reply to them you know I could say hello to people that have sent messages and I could read out the messages but I wouldn't do I wouldn't be talking to anybody alive like not verbally it's just me doing my rambles that I do but with a little bit of interaction so you could be part of the show, you know. And I thought about doing it at one o'clock to four in the morning, UK time. But I'm not sure what that time is in America or in Australia. That's what makes it kind of difficult because I'd like to do it not just for those that, you know, um, are listening to relax and to kind of switch off your brain and, you know, just to have a bit of you time, a bit of 
uh, calmness but also for those that are listening to go to sleep although my Orville the duck impressions singing might not have been useful for that oh, talking about my prostate I don't know but anyway it's it's um, it's hard to please everybody and to have it at the, at the right time for everybody that listens and it's a shame but we've got this, these different time zones I mean in America you've got different time zones in your own country it's so big it's sort of you know in this country we've got just one time zone it does change twice a year it goes forward and it goes backwards an hour and stuff and I don't know if other countries have the same thing but with like the local countries like Germany and a lot of Europe there might be an hour difference or two hours difference but then the further we get away like Canada, America Australia, New Zealand, South Africa it's just a different time zone completely I think Australia is practically it's the opposite to what we are I think and I think America is about 6 or 7 hours behind us like time wise I mean um, so it's it is I don't know what the time is let's say it's 8.30 in the morning now here you won't have 8.30 in the morning in New York until maybe 2.30 this afternoon here you know so it's hard to work out a time that would suit everybody and at the same time I don't want people listening to this while they're driving or you know because it's very I know that I just don't you know that's why I say at the beginning of every recording I only listen when you can safely close your eyes there's a reason for that and it is boring and it's supposed to be boring and you know I kind of I'd like to please everybody and I've had enough relationships to know that that's practically impossible if you can please one in ten you're doing well <laughs> that's that's what I think so um, I don't know let us know what you think if you if you fancy uh contact me on Facebook, leave a message on my website, jasonnewland.com and uh, I might do a live thing I'm not sure what I might do and I was just thinking about this this makes a bit more sense is maybe do a live recording once a week and see how it goes so do the recordings but then a live show one night a week like on a I don't know Friday from one till four yeah The only problem, I know it's, it's, this is a bit selfish here really, but one problem I'd have is I like watching boxing and sometimes there's boxing on in America early hours of the morning. I wouldn't want to miss that. So probably at least 10 times a year, maybe more, I wouldn't be able to do a Saturday night unless I pre-recorded it 
and just played it or just said there's no live recording yeah that yeah why not yeah or just have it on at a different time why am I making it so complicated uh, so I might do it I've, I don't know why once a, a week isn't enough to me it seems that this should be at least two days like a weekend Friday night and a Saturday night or you know early hours of the morning which means some people that don't get to stay up late the rest of the week maybe are up on a Friday night and a Saturday night ah we'll see we'll see yeah Yeah. Right, well, I better turn my phone on for these. Uh, what is it called? A delivery. When someone picks something up. So they're not delivery people, are they? This picking picking up people. Yeah. I'll be glad to have that chair gone. Oh, I've got a story to tell you about that chair. I'll tell you another time. Didn't have time during this. Oh, I've got a story to tell you. <laughs> anyway, I shall speak to you soon. I will speak to you tomorrow. So please remember to be kind to yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. You really do. You deserve to be happy. Say it after me. I deserve to be happy. Because you're a kind person you got a kind heart you're generous you're kind and get in touch with that feeling you know get in touch with that feeling that you feel when you say that to yourself when you realize actually that is the truth that you are a nice person So take care and I will speak to you tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye.